episode of Python, the Python basic series. Today, we're going to talk briefly about formatting Jupyter Notebook markdown cells. So we discussed what a notebook is and how you can create them in prior videos, and we also talked about the difference between code cells and markdown cells. Today, we'll be exclusively dealing with markdown cells to show you how you can format your notebooks in a way that will make them more visually appealing. So first we're going to talk about how you can create headings inside of a markdown cell. So first we'll make this cell a markdown cell. Remember you can do that by clicking the left side of the cell when it turns blue. You can tap M and make it a markdown cell. So we'll start by using the largest heading available to us and you can do that by typing the hashtag symbol or the pound symbol, a space, and then you can type whatever text you want. So we'll just type heading number one here. And there we go. Now we have our heading. And you can do this with anywhere from one to six hashtags. So if we make another markdown cell, let's do this one with six hashtags. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, space. We had a number six. And you can see this one is a lot smaller. And here's, here's another point that I would like to make. You might be familiar with these headings because these are also the headings you can use in HTML. In the last video, we discussed how Jupyter Notebooks are browser-based, which means you can actually type HTML code into a markdown cell and you will be able to see the output of that. So this heading number one here, you could also use the H1 tag. If you don't know HTML, it's fine. You don't need to know it for this course, and you don't need to use it to format your notebooks if you don't want to. But here you can also do heading number one. You can see that these two look the same. When you have one hashtag, that's H1, and then when you have six, it's H6, and so on and so forth. So you can have anywhere from one to six, you can have four, you need the space and say heading number four and that'll look the same as an H4 tag. So that's how you can use headings in Jupyter Notebooks. You can also use make your text bold or italic in Jupyter Notebooks. So let's just type any random sentence here. So we will format this sentence. And if you just run that cell, then you'll just see it's plain text. But let's say you want to make it bold. Remember, since you can use HTML in your markdown cells, you could just use the B tag, which is HTML, and it makes the text between the tag bold. And if you run that, you'll see we is now in bold. But if you don't want to use HTML, then there are also other ways you can make your text bold. You can use two underscores before and two underscores after. Then if you run that, you see now the word will is also bold. Or you can also use two asterisks before and after. And now you'll see that the word format is also bold. So these are three ways you can make your text bold and just feel free to use whichever one you're more comfortable with. And if you want to make your text italic, then you can use one asterisk on each side or you can use one underscore on each side. So now you can see this and sentence are now in italics because we use the single asterisk on either side and the single underscore on either side. Another handy trick is using line breaks. So Jupyter Notebook doesn't have a non-HTML way of doing this. So if you just type BR, that means line break. But before I show you that, if you just have this is sentence two, it's all going to be on one line. Even if you type enter and then run it, it still puts it on the same line, which is why you need to use this, this HTML BR tag, which stands for break line break. And now you can see that this is sentence two was moved to a new line. All right, so let's say we want to make this sentence red. So for that, we'll use HTML again. We'll use font color equals red. And remember, when you use certain tags in HTML, need closing tags also, and font is one of them. 
But here, this break tag, it doesn't need a closing tag. But you can see here, this is an opening tag for the font, and this is the closing tag for the font. And when we run this, you'll see this is sentence 2 is now read. So let's make a new markdown cell. So we'll say this is sentence 3, this is sentence 4. And run that. Now what we'll do here is we'll make these into bullet points. And to make bullets, you can type a dash and then have a space. And now you'll see your bullet point. And if you want, you could do this again down here. And now you have two bullet points. And I'll cover two more things in this video. We'll talk about numbered lists, and then we'll talk about embedding images inside of your notebook. So for a numbered list, numbered lists are simple. You can just say 1, item 1, 2, item 2. And now you see you'll have a numbered list. And you also notice that your numbered lists are indented by default. So here's a numbered list. You'll see that that's in front of your actual numbered list. And if you want a sub item, then you can indent and you can start, we'll say sub item one. And notice how I type the one here. But then when you run the cell, it gets changed to the letter A. That's the default behavior. So if you want a second layer, then it'll start with numbers, and then your indented layer will include letters. And finally, for embedding images inside of a notebook, you will have to know a little bit of HTML. You use the IMG, which stands for image, then you use SRC, which means source, and then you do equals, and then you'll have the path to your image, and then your, your image file. And this is how you embed an image. So you just have IMG SRC equals, and then you have the path and file name. And then when you run this, you'll be able to see your image.